And if you come back home for a visit, you can always buy an inexpensive coat at a thrift store to use while you're home. You don't have to transport it with you. Second thing to ask, are you keeping this item for a reason? So maybe it was a gift from someone close to you, or it was trendy at the time, but it's no longer in fashion. Well, if you don't like the item or don't have any use for it, it's perfectly okay to donate it or sell it, or if it's in bad shape, throw it away. Don't hold on to something you don't want just because it was a gift. The third thing to think about, are you saving an item just in case? I've worked with many clients over the years who need to keep tools or nuts and bolts or other items. They don't need to pack them to take them across the country. Trust me, there are hardware stores in your new location where you can buy what you need when you need it. They will have nuts and bolts. Now, I will tell you, though, that antique tools, older tools, are valuable, so you might want to hang on to those. Um, that's a good thing to keep in the back of your mind. But tools are available. You can go to any hardware store or home uh, improvement store and pick up something or borrow them from somebody uh, who's already in your community who brought theirs along. Another thing to think about is it a duplicate. There's no need to hold on to more than one of something. Uh, I once had a client who was sorting through her clothing. She found seven white blouses, all with tags still on them. She had purchased them over the years and she never wore them. So she narrowed it down to her favorite two and we donated the rest of them. And uh, I had one of my uncle, he was from the Depression era, so he never knew when he was going to get anything again. And he would always go to the rummage sale at the uh, church down the street from where they lived. Well, when I had to clean out his uh, apartment, we found seven steam irons in the drawers, shirts that were unopened, never worn, still with the tags on them. He just wore the same shirt all the time because he was a Depression era baby and didn't know when he might get it. But really, you don't need seven irons in your drawers. It's just not, you don't need to. The next thing to think about, are you keeping something with the thought that, ooh, someday I'll fix that? Well, if the broken item is still broken, it's time to say goodbye. If it costs more to fix it than to keep it, is that really a good idea? Can't you just buy a replacement for it? Now, I realize when you see TV shows, you see somebody has hundreds of old rusting tractors or old cars that someday I might restore. Well, it's going to take you a lifetime to restore that number of vehicles or uh, farm equipment, that sort of thing. So just be thinking about that. It's nice to have it to make it feel comfortable, but it's not always a good idea. And the next thing I really pound home all the time to people is, do you really want to put items into storage? One box can quickly become two. That can become three or more. I once had a client who couldn't part with anything. She rented several storage pods and put all her things that she couldn't bear to part with in the storage pods. She had three storage pods over seven years. You do the math, her son had to clear out all the boxes that she had stored. Don't do this to your children. Live in the now. If you uh, figure out what is in the box, what's the value of what you want to store, and multiply that times 12 because you're paying like $100 a month times 12 per year is the yearly fee to rent the space worth more than what's in the box. That's the big thing to ask. Now, sometimes you can have, um, you need temporary storage for a month or two while you're trying to get things sorted of through. That's very different from holding on to things longer than you need to. You need to just... Do the math and live in the now, I say. If you're reluctant to get rid of something, it's usually because you have an attachment to the past or you have a fear of the future. Things that are put away in a storage unit are just a perfect example of this. Why are you putting stuff away that you won't need and you don't use it regularly? It's stuff that you have no use for right now. 
Only the now is what matters, so accept that. Untie yourself from any burden that your current being has no use for. If it was something really meaningful from your past, it would. why put it in a storage unit anyway? You'd want to put it out on display. So if you're holding on to things because you think you might need them one day, think again. Your future is going to be very different when you retire and move on to something else. Your taste changes. It evolves. Things go out of style. Uh, live in the now. That's all I've got to say about that. So regardless of whether you decide to, or to move or to stay, you have to declutter if you're going to get rid of things in your home that are keeping you from enjoying your life. So remove excess clutter in your home. It will help you age in place safely. Uh, there's nothing worse than having things get stacked up like old magazines, mail you haven't opened, uh, receipts, invoices. Um, you know, how long do you need to keep tax returns? Well, not as long as you may think. I once had a client who had all her utility bills, every single utility bill since 1957 stored in boxes in her basement. And she was so thrilled when I told her we didn't need to keep them going back that far. But really, if you're going to move or if you're going to age in place, you really need to start sorting through your belongings now. Because if you find a place that you want to go to, but you still haven't cleaned out your clutter, it's going to hold you up. And you want to make your transition as comfortable as possible. So if you've decided to... Your current home just doesn't work for you like it did when you bought it 20 or more years ago when the kids were young. What, what are your choices? Well, yes, as I talked to about this, you can age in place where you are. And if your home meets your current and future needs, that's a great idea. But when you bought your home, you had a different lifestyle from what you have now. Does your home need to be adapted for safe living? Are there too many rooms? Can you rent out space in the part of the house that has excess number of bedrooms or can you close off those rooms if you have a lot of square footage that you're not using that's a lot of space to heat and cool but adjustments can be made so you might want to talk to a certified aging in place specialist in your area you can log on to www.nahb.org national association of home builders has builders and contractors who are certified aging in place specialists and you go by the state and you search to find contractors who specialize in adapting your home for safe use it's a great idea and at least you have a sense of what's needed but you really do need to declutter and you can sell and buy something smaller maybe you want to move closer to your grandkids or live where it's warmer or have better tax situation most people want these and good medical close by with walkability and good transportation. It will take a while to research, but careful searching will reward you. Lots of communities will offer stay and play weekends so you can visit and talk to residents. And there's many active adult communities in the country, so be careful and choose wisely. Uh, listen to my um, podcast on choosing an active adult community and tips, pros and cons of uh, living in one. Another option is multi-generational living. I've written articles on this topic and people ask me how to find this type of living arrangement. It's when you convert an existing house that includes space for grandparents, adult children, and grandchildren to live under one roof. Costs and child care are divided up. There's many other benefits as well. And as grandparents age, care can be provided for much less. And you might want to sell and buy a condo. So there's a whole podcast that I did on the ABCs of HOAs, and I discuss HOA living as well as condo living in that. But you're sharing a building with other residents who also pay a monthly fee to maintain the common areas, uh, exteriors, elevators. Inside the unit is your own space, but the convenience of locking and leaving when you want to travel is great. So you might also want to consider selling and moving to what's known as a life plan community. And I've done another podcast on is a life plan community right for you. And generally speaking, if you're independent, when you go in through the door, you can live there and they will take care of you until the day you pass. And they provide for your needs as you age. There are memory care areas, assisted living, other life care choices. So it's definitely worth looking into, even though it may be more expensive. 
And then selling and moving to an active adult community. Uh, listen to my podcast on Is an Active Adult Community Right for You? That's um, a really good topic because you want to be careful when you're looking. Um, if you're not going to use the amenities, why are you going to buy? If you don't play golf, don't think, oh, well, I'm going to now have time to learn to play golf. Well, those golf courses are expensive to maintain. So it's a lot to think about. And I've been helping baby boomers and their parents sell the family for over family home for over 20 years. So I guide you through the process of getting your home ready to either sell or age in place. And I use trusted contractors and lenders who can get you the money you need to remodel your home or buy a new one. So you can contact me at move or improve with Debbie at gmail.com. Or you can check out my website at www.boomerhousingoptions.com and listen to any of my previous podcasts on tips and tricks for retiring the way you want to.